claim. Let n be a natural number if the absolute value of n minus 1 plus the absolute value of n plus 1 is less than or equal to the number 1, then the absolute value of n squared minus 1 is less than or equal to 4. Now, I'm going to approach this as a vacuous proof. I'm going to try to convince us that the beginning, the antecedent of this claim, is actually false. Let me underline that, and I'll start some discussion here. <clears throat> okay, so we have absolute value of n minus 1. Recall that the absolute value of n minus 1 is going to be equal to two different things. It'll be equal to n minus 1 if n happens to be bigger than or equal to 1, and it would be equal to 1 minus n if n happened to be less than or equal to 1. Right? It's either equal to whatever it was given or it was equal to the opposite of that based upon whether it was a positive or a negative. And similarly, what's the absolute value of n plus 1? Well, that's going to be simply n plus 1 if n happens to be bigger than negative 1, and it's going to be the opposite of that, which is minus n minus 1, if n happens to be less than or equal to negative 1. So since we're given that n is a natural number, that means that n must be larger than or equal to 1. So this is not going to happen, and this is not going to happen. So the absolute value of n minus 1 is going to be n minus 1, and the absolute value of n plus 1 is going to be n plus 1. So therefore, if we were to take those and add them together, it would be just like adding together n minus 1 plus n plus 1. But notice that that's equal to 2n, and since n was a natural number, that means that this will always be bigger than or equal to 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. So there's no way that it would ever be less than or equal to 1. We can actually show that it's always going to be larger than or equal to 2. Okay, so that should give us a guide to how we're going to try to prove this theorem now. So let's go over here and pause the video for a moment, see if you can take what we did in our discussion and set up your own formal proof of this claim. But assuming that you pause there for a second and tried it on your own, let's start with our proof. So proof, we're going to start with, notice, since n is a natural number, we know that n will always be larger than or equal to 1. So the absolute value of n minus 1 will be equal to just n minus 1, and the absolute value of n plus 1 will just be equal to n plus 1. Thus, when we take the absolute value of n minus 1 and we add to it the absolute value of n plus 1, we are going to get n minus 1 plus n plus 1, which is equal to 2n. Right? Since n is a natural number, we have that n is larger than or equal to 1, so 2n will be bigger than or equal to 2, which is strictly larger than 1. So notice that in the antecedent, we say if n minus 1 plus n plus 1's absolute values sum to be less than or equal to 1, that's the beginning, the antecedent of our claim. But what we just showed here is that for all n's that are natural numbers, we actually get that n minus 1 plus n plus 1 must actually be larger than 1. So the antecedent is false. So we can say now that, so therefore, therefore, our claim is vacuously true. Vacuous, vacuously true because it has a false antecedent. False antecedent means that the statement is vacuously true.